Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Animus, the draft building card game. It's made by Ed Rodriguez, it's for two players, takes about 15 to 30 minutes to play the game, and it's for ages 12 and up. In the game Animus, you're going to be starting off with an entity, and you're going to choose one of these guys at random, and they're going to give you a special ability on them, as well as a little bit of flavor text. Then you're also going to be drafting cards. These cards are basically units that you'll be using to battle along with your uh, entity here, and and you're going to be placing them either in the front row, which is for melee, uh, the middle row for the range, and the bottom for the support. And each of the cards has own unique abilities. But the drafting is kind of interesting. It has different rows on the board in which you're going to be starting to draw, draw drafting from the bottom, and then you're going to unleash new cards and draw them continuously until you guys all have an equal number of cards based on the cards you've drafted. Then you're going to go into battle mode by placing your deck of cards that you've drafted, shuffling it up, and placing them onto your entity uh, turn by turn by simply uh, placing them and attacking. You can attack depending on the different types of cards and what they do and what they allow and whoever is able to defeat their opponent by removing um, their units off of the board is going to be the winner which I'll explain more down below after we talk about the contents. So here we have Animus the deck building card game and as you can see it comes with a box. It comes with three different die along with these tokens which are basically used for health. You've got the deck of entities and you've got your Animus deck of cards which you'll be using to draft out your armies uh, and you're only going to be needing these guys here. This is basically what it's going to look like to start with, you're simply going to shuffle this deck up, then place them all out six by five by four by three, and reveal the second and their fourth rows. And then you're going to deal out these entities here. The entities are a bunch of different characters that are basically like your leader that will give you a special ability depending on what happens throughout the game. You're going to deal out two to each player, and then you're going to allow them to select the leader that they of uh, their choosing and return the other cards when you won't need these anymore. And then the draft is going to begin, and it's a pretty interesting way it works. Some players is going to pick one and then the next player will pick one and as you pick cards the other one the ones that are left open are going to get flipped over so this one here still has a card on it so it's not going to get flipped over but this one does not have a card flipped put on it so he gets to get flipped over which means he can choose this one this one or this one so he'll pick this one for instance and then of course you can hide the cards if you'd like this one will get flipped over this player can then choose any of these three so maybe he'll pick the yeti here and then he's going to have the option as well maybe he'll pick this one here which will unlock these two and it'll go on just like that uh, continuously throughout the game um, until eventually all the cards have been picked up by one person or another during the draft and then they can go ahead and begin the next phase of play which we'll go ahead and talk about right now. So after the drafting is done you're simply going to have a deck of cards and you're going to have your entity for your, uh, main, your main leader here. You're going to put it down in front of you face up and that's your ability for the entire game. You're then going to get a deck of cards and you're going to draw a certain amount of cards and then you're going to go ahead and play them and there's three different rows. You've got your melee row which is your single top card You've got your range row, which is the, the, the middle row, uh, left and right. And then you've got the bottom row, which is going to be your support row, which is mainly going to be used for abilities. Your melee row can do melee attacks on the first two rows. And then your range row can do range attacks on the melee and the ranged rows. However, you're not able to do a melee attack in the range row, and you can't do a range attack in the melee row unless the cards specify. Anything that's said in the cards is going to be changing the rules of the game anyway. And throughout the game, you're going to try and do three damage to your opponent's creatures, and you'll be rolling dice to do so. If you can destroy up to 10 points of uh, creature uh, points uh, on the cards here, it's labeled what type of points they're going to be worth, which I'll talk about below as well. If you can do that first, you're going to win the game. Let me go ahead and show you below how it works. So we're down to the second portion of the game. We finished the drafting. We each have our own unique decks of cards, as well as our entity that is placed face up like this. So that way you can have your front cards facing each other. And of course, you have your abilities. This one says reaction after you place one of your, after one of your cards is killed, you can select two cards and uh, in play controlled by one player and move and move one damage from one to the other. So basically it switches damage from one card to another when a card of theirs is killed. This one is a tactical card and it says once per game you can discard a card from your hand and select a card in your discard pile and put it in your hand. So basically a grave robbing card. You're going to select three cards from your deck of cards there, just like that. 
and then you're going to begin the game. The first player is going to go ahead and select a card, and they're going to go ahead and place it in any of the positions they would like. Maybe we'll go ahead and put that there, and I'll explain the card right now. So you're going to have, this is the main type of card it is, so it's a green card. It has a weakness of blue, and it is worth one victory points to the opponent, provided it goes into the, the graveyard. It's also going to have a melee of seven, and a ranged of seven, the name of the card, and then of course flavor text, and what it does. Combat, it says you may place one damage on this card, and then one damage on an opponent opponent's card. So that's pretty useful actually right there. Um, and then the next player is going to get to go as well. But don't forget before you have the next player's turn that you can simply draw up to three cards at the end of your turn. And if you already have three, you can discard one and draw a new one, which is kind of nice. But after that, that's going to be his turn. He's going to get to choose uh, to draw a card. Uh, and um, now he gets to go ahead and play a card. And he has to always, you have to always have one in the melee position. And if you don't have one in the melee position, you have to move one up from a different position to put one in. Um, we'll go ahead and select this guy right here, I suppose. Uh, uh, teeny Harrigan. Okay, this one says, um, switch positions of any two cards in play controlled by one player. That could be useful when he, I played it. If there was two cards, I could switch the position, but because I just played it like that, it's not going to be very beneficial. So make sure you make right, good choices when you're playing the cards down. And then you can choose to attack. So for instance, I'm going to go ahead and attack my melee ability with hers. They have a seven, I have a six, so we're going to roll off. I got a five, they got a one. That means I'm winning. Um, and also for type advantage, right? So this player has type advantage on me. So he would also get to roll this die as well. This is still a two. So now we get to select which one of these die they want to use. They'll use the higher one, of course. Add this to their melee, which is going to be nine. And add my six and my five, which is 11 over here. It means this player is going to take the damage. So they're going to take one damage to their character. If at any point there's more than, uh, there's three damage or more on a character, that character is removed and it is discarded. After I've done that, I will then end my turn. I could choose to discard one and draw one if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. Um, there, this player's turn here. I'm going to draw a card. And I may play this card right here. And this one says, when you play it, remove one damage from all cards in play, which is just going to remove one from there. It would also help, hurt, help me as, as it says all cards in play, but because there wasn't any on mine and one on hers, it's a good play to make. So now they are going to get to choose to attack. They can do a ranged attack on this player if they'd like. And um, hmm, they will do that. So this is going to be an eight for them. And uh, this is going to be, I believe, a six because it's in melee. So they're going to go ahead and roll this one. Yeah, one. Yeah, four. But also note, there's a type disadvantage there. So this player gets an extra roll. And as you can see, you've got an eight and a four, which is 12. And then you've got a six and a two, which is eight. So this player will take a damage. Seeing how this is gonna kind of work. And the game is gonna continue going like that. Eventually cards are gonna be played like this on the board. And there's also gonna be additional slots down here, which are going to be your support section. These guys can't attack, but they'll have abilities that can be useful when you play them or when they're on the board. You also have the ability before you attack to simply move cards from one space to another by adjusting them because sometimes you don't want to you want to protect them or you don't want to put them in melee but remember three damage on a card it's going to get removed and always the tactical advantage is going to get an additional die to roll and choose the best between them if you get a tie too bad also if damage ever ties so for instance if this was a seven and a three and this was an eight and a two this would be a tie both of them would take damage if there ever ends up being 10 points in a person's graveyard the other player is going to win also, last thing, to for, don't forget, this ability, you can use it uh, once per game here, and this one is whenever a specific action happens, this one will take precedent. So that's the basic idea of Animus. After that happens, if you want, you can go ahead and select in more cards and try and draft out more cards for yet another game. So a couple caveats too, just in case you, um, I might have messed up, I don't know, but a range attack going against another character, you're going to use the attacker's specific type uh, to go against. So if this guy uses his range damage on somebody else, they have to go ahead and counter with their ranged as well. If it's a tie, they both take damage, and if somebody has high, a type advantage, they get to roll two die and pick the best one. Ten points in the graveyard is the winner. And also, don't forget about all the different types of cards. We'll go over, go ahead and go over a couple of them. Solar Sunstreak. Play. Whenever you play this card, remove up to two total damage from cards you have in play. That's pretty useful. Tactical. Discard uh, this card and select a card in play. It is automatically killed. You may play a card from your hand. So when you play this guy, you get to play another card 
card reaction. When one of your cards is killed, you may immediately play this card from your hand, and so on and so forth. Of course, the cards with the higher point value are normally going to be better cards, but if they die, you might have a, you might be losing the game. So you have to be very careful. Some of them are actually really strong in the game where you actually, if it dies, you can choose another card in the field to die, but that is going to cost a lot of points if it does happen to die. And of course, there's more entities in the game. I have up to four, I believe, extra ones, six total, but I'm not sure what you guys are going to be getting in the game. This is a prototype, so it can be changed. But Overall, that is what the game is about. So what do I think? Well, first of all, the artwork is excellent. I really like the artwork for this game. I like the unique drafting mechanic, which I think is the best aspect of the game because it's so different. You've got the different rows that unlock new cards and allow people to choose cards back and forth. I think the game could be played with more than two players if you made some adjustments. I'm not sure how you'd do that because I don't design, but I do know it should be possible and it would be more fun. I'd like it to see a team version of this game or team variant of the game. Um, and I think it'd be very, very easily possible. In fact, you could probably just play Two players on one side, two players on the other side, and they have the option of who they want to fight. And if a total of 20 points is emptied on either graveyard, it would work. And I think that would be kind of fun. I don't know. I haven't tested it, though. But overall, the game's fun. If you like a little bit of drafting, if you like a little bit of the dice rolling and tactical aspects, this is going to be more on the tactical side than it is going to be on the luck side because you have so many different options available as you're doing stuff, moving the cards around, selecting which is going to be the best ability to play it, as far as maybe also attacking with my range against your melee. Oh, this card's better than this card, but this card's going to be this card because and you can see how it can keep going on from there. Overall, though, if you like this style of game, this is definitely what I would suggest picking up. We had a good time playing this, and we played it over and over again just because we had a lot of fun. Even after we knew we already liked it, we kept playing it. So that goes to say how much we enjoy the game Animus. Definitely check it out if you're interested. Kickstarter in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching our Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as checking out Animus, the draft building card game. It's currently on Kickstarter in the description below. Uh, and yeah, it's one of those games where if you if you see it and you like the aspect of drafting, mini drafting games, you're gonna like this game, I think. A little bit of tactics too. It's cool. Uh, Unfilteredgame.com. We got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, as well as checking out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. Don't forget, AEG giveaway on my website right now. You can go ahead and win the game Space Base. It's super fun. I like it. Machi Core Killer, in my opinion, hands down. Do go ahead and check that out. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.